Sky Voices, my name is Ben Booth. And hi, I'm Victor Wamed with Storyteller Films. And today our guest is Lisa Lucas. She's presently with the New Mexico Film Office. And the New Mexico Film Office is about to sponsor a conference for all the professional film people in New Mexico called... The New Mexico Film and Industry Conference. It's an annual conference. It's happening November 16th and 17th in Albuquerque at the Crown Plaza Hotel. You can get tickets uh, at our website, nmfilm.com. Who is this attractive? So, so the State Film Office um, hosts every year a uh, single conference that brings all of the people who are really making uh, film and TV in this state. If you are aspiring, if you're experienced, if you're a Hollywood player, if you're um, you know, working in the industry here in crew or whatever capacity, you need to go to the conference because it's where you know, we're all converging and talking about you know, what's happening and where do we go from here. We have so much exciting stuff going on right now. Our state is exploding with possibility and potential uh, success. So it's, it's, I'm just thrilled to be at this point and being able to talk about it. You know, we've worked really hard to get this to this point. So, uh, you know, you we know. have observed many of the organizations that exist for filmmakers and actors and actors, but this really sounds practical. It well, really sounds like, and, and yeah. I commend you guys for doing this. It really is practical. You know, the tickets are really affordable. Um, you, get so much. When you go to these conferences, you know, a lot of times in bigger cities for, for film and TV, it's enormously expensive. Um, you might not get that much out of it. There's so many people and whatever. Mm -hmm. This is very concentrated. Um, Barbara Kerford, who organizes the entire conference, is an absolute dynamo. She has answered the call. We listen to the people of New Mexico and the industry. What is it that you need to know now? Where are we? So. We change the conference every year. So this year, we've adapted it to what people really need, which is, okay, if you're a writer, you know, how do you get representation? How would you get your work on a streaming service or in the movies or writing a feature or whatever? You know, what's the path? If you have your film already and you're an independent local filmmaker, mm -hmm. how do you get distribution? Um, if you're have an ideas person um, and you want to pitch your idea to get it underwritten by a network or, or an independent financing, you know, how do you do that? So we I'm going to pitch. Right? Are you? Are you? Uh, well, I, you know, I am on the pitch panel oh, actually the, with right. a lot of people because I, on my other side of what I do, I've been a writer, producer, uh, actor for 22 years. So um, in LA, New York, and New Mexico. So, um, you know, I am constantly developing things with my own production company and, you know, there is a method to the madness. It's not just, you know, throwing darts at a dartboard in the dark. There really is a method to it and it really depends on your experience, where you are, who you know, and we're going to talk about all that stuff at the conference and we're going to take questions. And we have also this thing at the conference which I love. Um, it's like a speed dating thing. You can actually sign up the day before, and if you go um, to the website, it's a uh, four-minute one-on-one sessions with industry professionals. So you meet these, mm. and these are legit people. These aren't just, you know, Joe Blow off the street. These are people who are doing this. You know, Alton Walpole's going to be there, a major figure in New Mexico. He was, you know, ran the whole show of Godless which is not an easy task, um, <laughs> and did it very, very well. He, he's like the godfather of film here in New Mexico. He's one of the people, um, Harris Tulchin, Bobby Shelton, Mark Comstock from SAG-AFTRA, Marie McMaster, you know, works with Joe Edna Bolden in casting, Marge Ergus, probably our number one accountant in New Mexico for film, um, Melanie Kirk, another uh, almost showrunner, Sam Tischler, worked his way up from PA to now, you know, almost co-producer and UPM of huge things, and he's a New Mexican. Um, people who are doing it right now, um, uh, Viviana Zaragocia from Three Point Capital in LA, how do I get financed? What does that right. mean? Okay, I just don't know where to go from here. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, at a, I'm at a hurdle, right? You can go to a specific industry professional, sign up online, nmfilm.com, and get one of these sessions or, or more. Because we do have kind of a, a worldwide audience for this. 
is would this, if someone is out of this, out from outside the state of New Mexico, would this be a good event to come and get acquainted at? Whether you're um, doing it here in New Mexico or not, you have industry professionals who are, you know, giving you the real deal guidance of how you start, you know. Maybe you're, like I said before, in the middle. I've written something, okay? I can't get out of my mom's basement with it. I'm afraid to show it to people. Mm -hmm. You know, what's my next step? Yep. But I know it's really good, but maybe it isn't. Maybe you need to show it to some people and get some feedback, right? Or maybe you have made something. You're an independent filmmaker. You used your own money or you got sponsors or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, you scraped nickels together. You made this beautiful short film. Now what do I do with it? You know what I mean? Or I took it to a couple local film festivals. Now what do I do with it? I want to make a feature. I have a script. You know, how do I sell it? You know, and I think we're at this place right now where, um, you know, with the announcement of, you know, Netflix coming, uh, this was a billion dollar deal, you know, at minimum, you know, they're just, you know, going crazy with uh, their content, mm -hmm. as you know, and other places like Amazon and Hulu and all of these, you know, transition, the transition that we're in right now, I talk about this a lot in different, um, you know, I speak publicly a lot about what's happening in our state, but um, in the world and in the world of media, you know, I've got my mom's group, mm -hmm. okay, 70 plus, no offense mom, but you know, it's positive, but there are a lot of baby boomers and, um, and seniors, you know, who I'm not getting rid of my cable, okay, that's great, okay, that's their choice, right. and they're yeah. going to keep the remote, mm -hmm. and they're going to keep the guide, they finally figured out how to record stuff, and it, I am not giving that up. Okay, and that's... you would let them buy your movie. <laughs> right, of course, yes. and that's, that's my mom in that, that sector. Then you got the people in the middle who it's kind of like, well, you know what? I just unplugged. I, I totally get the cable thing, but I'm Hulu, mm -hmm. Netflix, and Amazon now. Mm -hmm. I don't need to. I don't need to do, have the big cable bill, and I get and understand how to do it. Then you have, you know, the younger people who are like, you know, I only watch stuff on my phone. I only watch stuff on my on my watch. Mm -hmm. I won't watch a big screen. I will only go to the movies if it's a Marvel movie. You know what I mean? So, right. so or I want VR now, or I want a different experience. There's a lot of different kinds of demand now. It's it's yeah. just it's just an incredible time because the not only is the quality of the content amazing, but the demand for it. And because of the internet, it's global. You know, you're yeah. not just yes. making something for a local market anymore. Or I'm trying to get it into U.S. theaters. Or, I'm trying to get it into film festivals. It's global. Your work well, it, is global. It, it has an interesting cultural impact. You know, we have a daughter who is a senior in high school. You know what we do at night? What? We get around. We watch an episode of The Flash or of The Arrow. They didn't like the iron fist bread. But this has become a cultural thing for our family. It's a time together, you know. Right. We eat the dinner and we say, let's go do an episode. Watch some arrow. Right, 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 right. It's really That's changed. so cool. And, and, yeah. and the Netflix deal, we believe, we believe it will generate the building of additional film production studios in, in, in this area. And so we're going to see that for Santa Fe is going to fill up. You're it, already it, getting Well, you know what? Today. It will. I, I'm calling it the Netflix effect, okay? Yeah, in the, the last Netflix 48 effect. hours, <laughs> I've gotten more phone calls. It, it was like the tipping point. You know, a lot of times yeah. for investors, you know, you need that confirmation mm -hmm. of somebody making the big investment. It's like, oh yes. my God, if they're there, well, we're going to go now. Yep. You know, and it's like, oh, well, did they hit their cap? Did they do this? Is it's a new, it's an election year? Uh oh, jitters, jitters. And it's like, no, Netflix is committing. These other people are committing. Um, we're going into new administration with um, our eyes open, clarity. So, so we're, a, we're a very film friendly environment. We yes. not only are we film friendly, we are one of the best because we are turnkey, meaning, you know, and if uh, you know any any of you who've produced out there, you want things fast, good, um, you want thing, you know, crew of quality, you don't want to have to explain anything to anybody. Um, with New Mexico, what's really awesome is unlike a lot of other states, we have an incredible crew base. In fact, we pride ourselves on having the best, most professional crew base outside of Hollywood and New York. 
Um, and I really believe we do. Yes, Georgia has an amazing program, Illinois has an amazing program, North Carolina, Utah, but they don't have the crew base. So that means you have to spend money to bring the people from LA or whatever. So, and we have the actor base, which is also amazing, SAG-AFTRA actor base. So you've got so much here. We have the studios. What's our next big thing? Post-production. Netflix is gonna be a big part of that. Um, I have editors, composers, all of the artists in the state. And how is Netflix going to benefit? I don't think it's just going to benefit Albuquerque and Santa Fe. It will benefit the entire state. Well, Why? there's another thing we have, <laughs> and that is we're filming this in the offices of the uh, Santa Fe Film Office. Yes. The, the how many films a day, I mean a, a year, would you say y'all handle or process or get going through this office? Well, it's so funny that you mention that because I just had to do the stats for that. Um, in the last five years, I'm including shorts, mm -hmm. okay, I mean, I'm talking like under 40,000 to multi-million dollar projects. We have done 355 projects in the state of really? New Mexico. Yeah. Yeah. And so when we walked through this office, Victor was saying, boy, this is pretty impressive. And it is, and people like you are impressive. Well, and that's you. something we have that <laughs> maybe Alabama or Tennessee or Georgia doesn't have. And, uh, and so I, I'm proud of you guys and oh, proud of what you're you. doing. Thank it's you. exceptional. Um, what's really cool about New Mexico, too, and I, what I think a lot of people appreciate is that in our office, in the state film office, we are all film professionals. This is personal for us. Mm -hmm. Like, we're trying to hone this program because we want to succeed ourselves, with our friends, with our film community. We really care about the people here and, and their, all of their different triumphs and getting them to where they need to go and on the right path because you know we're in this too we're all we're kind of all in it together so it's a pretty cool community i gotta yeah, say yeah, yeah. um film like a lot of things is truly a people person networking uh, uh situation mm -hmm. like because Okay, if there were some exact formula of like, I want to make an amazing movie and get it out there, then everybody would do the exact formula and mm -hmm. we'd all just do that for a living. Um, but there is no exact formula. So there are these X factors like luck, timing, trends, um, you know, things happen where people all of a sudden want certain mm -hmm. subject matter, um, things go out of fashion, in fashion, whatever the case may be. People make up different you know, styles and, and, and different kinds of types of, uh, you know, like you're saying, these, you know, binge-worthy, great um, bringing family together series, mm -hmm. or, you know, couples who are like, you know, I just want to watch Outlander with you, or whatever the case may be, <laughs> right? And they're these bonding things. They're keeping us, um, you know, really at home watching stuff together. Yes, they more are. More so than going yes, to the are. theater, because yep. these are all on That's the internet. Um, so... That being said, um, if you want to be a part of this whole thing, you've got to meet people. You cannot stay in a silo by yourself. You've got to share your work. You've got to um, learn, research, get educated, meet people. People can help you get to where you want to go. So mm -hmm. how do you do that? you got to go to conferences. you got to get involved in groups. There's so many actor groups and filmmaker groups and writers groups and all this stuff available. Just go on, mm -hmm. you know, Facebook and, um, you know, look up New Mexico film and there'll be at least 12 that I know of. And get on this stuff because it's all happening in, via social media as well. But um, with our conference, you can meet people face to face. You can bring your stuff. Um, when people know who you are, we're such a small community. I always tell vendors, you know, editors who like to be lone wolves and stay by themselves mm -hmm. in their little mm -hmm. little edit cave. Um, you know, special effects people, who might, whatever the case may be, get out of the house. Come meet with the rest of us. Yeah. We know who you are, so when the jobs come up, we can go, hey, I know that guy in Rio Rancho, or that woman who only, she's the only person in New Mexico who does, 80, uh, who does um, Foley. Come to our conference, learn about what's happening right now in our state on when the cutting the edge. The conference is November 16th and 17th. That's a Friday and a Saturday. You can go one day, you can go both days. I, I recommend going both days. It's really affordable. Um, tickets are on sale now for $75. 
um, for a ticket. However, um, if you do it the day of, they're 95. So you can save $20 if you sign up right now. Students are 55. Guys, that's cheap. Have you ever been to one of these things in LA so or New York? Fun. I mean, this is in Albuquerque. Expensive. It's in Albuquerque at the Crown Plaza that's Hotel. Um, How do we also, sign up? Wait, there's one other thing. On the 15th, that's the Thursday night from 5 to 7, that's the individual one on one session. Ah. It's be dating kind of thing for you. So look that up on nmfilm.com and you can sign up for that right now. There are slots open. So I highly recommend you take advantage of that. Okay. Um, what your Website? Website, nmfilm.com, nm as in New Mexico, film.com. You know, that's the other thing too is don't be afraid to ask questions or to call. This is what we're here for. We want to help you. I, when I, it sounds like I'm exaggerating that I take 700 phone calls a day, but I really do. Sometimes I feel like I'm a customer service rep, but we, we can direct you to the right place. We can answer your questions. If we don't know, we'll find out and get back to you. And we do, you know, we're small, but mighty. So don't feel like you're bothering us or something like that. We're here for you, film community of New Mexico. So please, please give us, you know, uh, or email, you know, we're all of our contact info is on the website. I've got a question and a different subject. Okay. How did you get here? Tell us about your life. Physically today? You've got, <laughs> we've got about five minutes okay, left on okay. this. Give us, give us your life. How did, oh, okay. how did your path bring um, you to Santa Fe? Well, I'm a, a I am a, uh, let's see, uh, third generation Croatian American, 100%. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, my family uh, settled in California. I grew up in Southern California. So I grew up around movie people. I went to school with kids whose parents were in the movie business. Um, I loved it. Uh, I always wanted to be a writer. I made films when I was really young. I studied theater, studied dance. Um, and then uh, when I went to college, I think that's when I really uh, said to myself, this is kind of, I think, what I want to do. And I started off in documentary film and uh, won an award at a festival in New York. And I thought, okay, this is it. I'm going to be a director. It's so easy. That was <laughs> yeah, a good. long time nice. ago, pre-internet, pre-cell phone. Okay, and um, and then you hand your card, your business card out, and then nobody calls, and you're like, ah, what do I do? So um, at that time, the sort of reality show docu series craze was was hitting at the beginning of 2000, and um, so uh, you know people were calling documentary filmmakers to make TV shows. So I started and sort of dove into that, and for um, I uh, was in New York for four years making uh, all kinds of stuff from like CNN type news, hard hitting story, documentary, political kind of, uh, you know, scary story kind of things to, um, you know, lifestyle, magazine shows, um, entertainment, uh, music, art, all that kind of stuff. And then my boss in New York uh, got the chance to become the CEO of the burgeoning style network and E before it went Kim Kardashian and all that stuff. Um, and so we were making TV shows for three years. I feel like that was kind of like a graduate school in television oh, to have yeah. to do everything, write, right. direct, yes. produce. And then from there, um, I took the leap into freelance, which is a whole other situation. And then it was 11 years in LA um, working on every kind of show you can possibly imagine, working my way up from um, assist, associate producer to executive producer, showrunner, writer, creator of shows. Um, I'm still doing that. Um, however, uh, uh, my mom uh, <laughs> yes. moved to San Jose about, about, <laughs> about uh, 30 years ago. So I've been coming here for many years, I have friends, family here and um, decided to relocate my family here about eight years ago, worked for the Reels channel for four years, running all of their programming. That was really exciting. And then when they stopped doing local production, um, I had been arguing with the New Mexico State Film Office from the other side of like, why do you right. do things this way? What's right. going on? Yeah. And I, I thought I could make this better. And I think um, Nick, my boss, was like, oh yeah, you know, no an opening came up and you know we need help do you still think that you could do it and so the timing was right and I thought you know how could I really do something on a grander scale of just 
you know, continuing to do my own stuff, and I was going into a development phase of making things, so I thought, okay, I'll work for the film office for a little while, and then one year turned into two, turned into almost three now, and I think that um, it's been a very fulfilling thing to yep. come here and just help nurture people, help educate people um, to how it works, uh, make our program the best it can possibly be, um, think of new ways of doing things so that uh, well, you, you have know, a, you we're have on your the cutting own, edge. You have your own production company. Right? Yeah. I do. It's, and and you, what, you're yeah. well thought of. Uh, you know, uh, my wife is on the board of Women in Film, oh, yes. and she's on the board of sag -Afro. And when your name comes up, she says at those meetings, those people will listen to you. You know, she so they nice. respect you. That's so nice. And so, you know, you're considered an asset to the community. Oh, well, what a blessing well, it is for, for, that. for that, everyone here. That's really sweet of you. Um I I you know, I I feel like it's all uh giving back about giving back in full circle. There were people that gave me incredible opportunities early in my career and that got me to where I am today. I feel like you have to do that sort of give back to, to others. And, you know, for me, God, there's just so much incredible burgeoning storytelling talent here. Mm -hmm. I always say in the state of New Mexico, you can never, ever stop telling stories That's here. Right. There's so many to tell, literally so many. We don't even have enough filmmakers to, to tell them all. But, if someone um, wanted yeah. to produce a new film, and they wanted you to participate in it, they needed your talent, would you welcome calls or inquiries to you personally for that sort of thing? Well, it, it, it's crazy. Um, and in the beginning of my career, I was a trained actor, and I, I did a lot of acting and stuff like that, and then I ended up going behind the camera for 18 years, but when I got back to New Mexico, long story short, one of the editors that I hired at Reels, Hannah McPherson, who has now gone on to fame and right. fortune um, as a local uh, girl, done good, girl done good, um, she cast me in something Year, uh, about four years ago, and I was like, oh my god, I can't do this, you know, what are you doing? And then she's like, no, you're getting back in the game. And I, I really credit her because um, I, it, I found my love for acting again in, in doing that experience, and then kind of never stopped working doing that, but that's more really fun for me, and I can play kooky character roles now more than when I was younger and the pressure to yeah. play these ingenue, oh my god, I, I, I feel for you, anyone who's doing that out there, that's so, so hard. But um, but anyway, so I do that, and yes, you could approach me for that, um, for producing and writing, um, you know, it depends, I'm, I'm really open, um, there are a lot of people that come through here, and I will be very honest with you, um, you know, this is not something I will take on for the following reasons, but I will uh, get you to someone who may be interested. Mm -hmm. So I, I really try to be a facilitator if I'm not interested in something myself. Um, Could you share your email? You uh, <laughs> um, no, sure. My email personally is uh, lucas.likeminds at gmail.com. Okay. Um, and that's for if it's a, a writing, producing, or um, acting sort of scenario. But you've done it all. You have, yes, you, and you've continue got, to do you've it. You've got your PhD in this industry. Right? <laughs> well, you're a member of SAG, you're a member of the Producers Guild, you're a member of the Writers Guild. Emmy Award winner of, for, uh, for um, a show okay. I did for NBC nice. um, called My First Time. That was 10 years ago, hard to believe, but yeah. that was super exciting um, to have done that. I, I, you know, but I feel like... Honestly, I'm kind of just getting started. I'm starting to oh, do it's things. All in front of you. I'm starting to do things I've never done before. In that, um, I really my bucket list goals are, of course, I really want to make a feature. Um, I, I co-wrote one with uh, in the last two years with Terry Bork. He's an amazing writer. Asked me to co-write something with him a couple of years ago. We're trying to get that optioned now in LA. Yeah. Very exciting. So. I mean, you know, I just feel like I'm doing what I love. I'm helping people get their dreams made and on the screen, you know, however I can help. That's kind of what I'm about. And I love collaborating and working with people. You've got an incredible energy. And, um, Thank you. <laughs> and it, it's powerful.